It's me, Undead Viking, coming to you another video review. Uh, the game I am reviewing today is called Essen. Essen, the game. Essen. Essen is, if you don't know, uh, the big board game convention held every year in Germany. I think it's actually called Spiel, which means play, but everyone refers to it as Essen, because that's where it's being held. And I would love to go to Essen. It's one of those things where I, I, I desperately want to attend the convention at some point in my life. And, you know, obviously there is like a financial uh, aspect to uh, attending, which which uh, is, is difficult, you know, having kids and a family and a house and a mortgage and, you know, all those things. But um, it's one of those things where I know eventually I'll be able to have things slot correctly as far as my own finances and everything go to be able to attend. But more importantly, um, Essen is held in October, and uh, it's usually right around uh, my anniversary. And so selling my wife on going to Germany for a trip to enjoy uh, like Germany as a romantic getaway is one thing. But selling my wife on attend going to Germany uh, as a romantic getaway being spent at a board game convention is a whole other story. And, and while I'm certain that eventually I'll be able to convince her that this would be something that would be really awesome for us to do, um, it would have to be one of those things where we're having like a couple of weeks or something in, in, in Europe. And this is one of those like little stops that I get to do. So, it'll happen. I, I know eventually I will be able to attend Essen, but um, unfortunately, uh, right now it does not look like it's going to happen anytime in my near future. But regardless, uh, the game of Essen is basically about attending the convention. It is about each person is uh, a board game enthusiast, which I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you are one of those people. And you are going to the convention, you have a wish list of games that you that you desire, and you are racing into the, the, the convention center, uh, fighting the crowds, racing the other players to get certain games, and, and trying to earn the most points. And you earn points by completing your wish list, um, by picking up games that uh, gain buzz and are noteworthy, or like uh, getting the right variety of games that uh, certain like um, like fair play games, trip track games, board game geek, the way that they, um, they they start like uh, suggesting or saying these are the games to get type of things. And you, you have all these different requirements that you have to do and each of those little requirements, if you fulfill them, if you fulfill them, you, you gain victory points. And this is all something I'll explain in more detail when I show you how to play the game. Now, combine that with the fact that you have when you start off, you're, you you basically you got a backpack or you got a, like a basically a shopping cart kind of thing, and um, you are racing through the area and you have a certain amount of money. And as you go into the convention center, you start as as you load up your backpack with these games, uh, you start losing actions. You start losing um, the ability to move as quickly as you had before. And woe be to you if you actually run into a crowd because the crowd then slows you down or what have you. And so you have to uh, you know, you basically, if you can get back to your car, you can dump off all the games in your trunk, and then you're you not carrying anything, and then you can race back in. And so the game becomes kind of a um, like a seesaw of like I really want to get these games, but that's going to slow me down. I'm running out of money, and you know there's an ATM out by the car as well, so you can withdraw money and things like that. And so you're you're balancing. They have a balancing act throughout the entire game of like, do I have enough time to like grab this one extra game and then race out or would it be better for me to uh you know like go out now and then like you know unload and then race back in and hopefully um that game that i want you know some another player doesn't race over and buy it in the meantime and so there's all kinds of fun little decisions uh that tie in like that and as far as euros go it's very thematic to the feel i mean i guess you could technically remove the theme and put something else in like collecting fruit or something but i think one of the reasons why I enjoy this game so much is because it is like a very thematic Euro game and um, I'm able to actually kind of dive into that that theme a lot. But regardless, I'm kind of getting into my conclusion here. I've, re I've been really enjoying the game, playing it with my friends. So why don't I show you how to play the game like I s always do and then we will come back here and 
I will tell you exactly, uh, I'll expand upon those reasons I had before and maybe give you a few more uh, things about the game uh, that I really enjoy as well. So, all right, here, here is how to play Essen the Game. This is Essen the Game, the board of the game, if you will. Um, just point out a few quick things just so you can see what you're looking at and then I'm going to kind of explain. I've done some of the setup already for a four-player game. Uh, the way the game begins is that uh, each person, uh, the first thing that happens is uh, you deal out eight of these cards uh, to each person. So this setup hasn't been done yet, so I just did that for the, the sake of ease for myself, if you will. But each person gets eight of these cards, so you can just see these cards. And what these cards are, they are a game that is going to be sold at Essen. So, like, you know, here's, you know, just all these games. You might recognize, like, you know, Nations from Asmodee Editions. Um, there's Intrigue City from Purple Games. And, and so some of these you might recognize, and some of these, you know, might be more uh, uh, out of the woodwork, if you will. I mean, all the, all the, like, classics that were probably at Essen, I'm guessing, last year, um, you know, there's Russian Railroads and stuff, and plus some of the minor ones. But there's a big, giant, thick deck of these and it matches up with a location inside the convention hall which is over here and I should mention that this is a prototype version of the board and components obviously um, the final look is pretty amazing I must admit but regardless and so uh, these are the games that are going to be released at Essen and you get dealt eight of these cards and each person then goes ahead and selects one of those cards and then they pass it to their left and then they select one of the cards that's left and they pass it to the left and so on and so forth until you have four cards and these are secret nobody else knows what they are and these are the first four games on your wish list so let's say like these just for sake of an argument here like these are like the first you know four games or whatever on your wish list you pick these and so you're going to wait and hopefully manage to pick these games up once they show up out on the convention floor because if you manage to pick um a, a get a game on your wish list that's worth uh, possible bonus points well it will be worth bonus points at the end of the game the more you get the more bonus points you get and so you keep those secret and you don't let anybody see those and then, uh, since I only, everybody only picks four, um, then the remaining cards are all put to the side of the board. In the case of, like, you know, if you play a two-player game, it'll only be eight, you know, with, with three it'd be 12 and four would be 16. And so you put those to the side of the board, and those are wish list cards that might eventually uh, be, you know, if you buy the game, you get to take that card. Uh, the remaining cards are then put in a big pile and you can then draw them later with actions that you get. And I'll just, here, I'll put these off to the side of the board. That's like the draw pile. And like these then will be set on the side. These are all the cards that didn't get taken. And I'm not going to, normally you'd spread these out and you'd show, um, you know, by color and by name and everything. So everybody can look at them and then, and then guess their movement or whatever. And I'm just going to just put those right there just so you know but just imagine these were like obviously this is a pretty fairly big game board and there's a lot of uh retail area if you will that you're going to be used so i don't really have enough space to show that as well each person gets a player board and you can see this is like your shopping cart and these are the actions that you get and uh you'll be when you move like at the very beginning you have eight actions but as you purchase games you'll place these in your cart you can only fill these spaces with games and then obviously as you fill them with games you lose actions now you can see down here your wish list like one to three games at the end of the game on your wish list you get five then 10 15 and so forth if you actually somehow get 10 we've never, we never had that happen i i've gotten eight once um but you get bonus points at the end of the game for doing so the spot up here is your car trunk, and um, literally when you return games back to your car, you'll put them up here in the snacks, the type of game. If you notice, like here, like here, I'll just show you this game real quick. Uh, here's 12 Realms uh, from Mage Company, and like the, the token has like how much, how many euros it costs to buy. Um, if it has a, anything in this corner, that's the bonus to the points that it's worth when you buy it. The section down here tells where it goes, you know, space D3, and then type of game is it's a dice game. So it's just, that's the type of game. So here, we'll go ahead and put that back down there. 
And so, you know, if, if you bought that, you'd place it up here. Now, the type of game, you might wonder why that matters. It matters for a couple of reasons. Um, as, the, as Essen progresses, uh, certain games will be worth more points, more base points. So you can notice here we have, like, the Hourglass, so kind of like a strategy game. Here's cards. There's a card game, dice. And, like, I'm guessing the Meeple stands for worker placement. I'm guessing. Um... And as uh, games get more popular and less popular, you'll move these little tokens up and down like that, and then they'll get to be worth more points. And so, since this is a dice game, if it was like this, you see the dice is actually down in one. Nobody likes them, but it would be worth plus one. So if you bought that, it would be worth two. And the reason why some of them get to be, like, on the cards themselves, say plus one and stuff like that, it's the cost of the game and also kind of how far back in the in the convention hall it is when to buy it, meaning it's tougher to get back there and buy it because this is a game where you have limited movement and you run out of run out of action space. So you can see here uh, this game, um, Capitals, uh, from Mercury Games, you can see is 55, so it costs a lot, so that's one of the reasons why it's worth extra points. And it's also worth plus three because it's kind of set all the way back there if you can somehow manage to get back there and get it. So... In this case, each person has picked their four games, and then after they've picked their four games, that's when you, you lay out all these tiles. I laid them out earlier, so I do apologize for that. So you don't know which games are going to be available. So that isn't a piece of information that you have available to you uh, prior uh, to picking your wish list. So you're kind of picking wish lists, maybe games near each other, so you can pick them up, or games that are close to the door. But picking games that are close to the door can, can work against you, too, because if somebody goes ahead of you, they might just pick up that game on the way in just for some points, and then that's the only game available, and then it's gone, and then so you've lost a game off your wish list. So the next thing you do is you'll take these uh, little these these cards. The, it's AM. So this is the, these are like the morning buzz cards. These are the games that like if you have games of this type, you get bonus points. So you draw, take three of these, just like so, and you won't use the rest for the rest of the game. And you'll place them in this these spots, Board Game Geek, Trick Track, and Fair Play. Three websites that are technically tracking the popularity of the game, the games at, at, at the uh, convention. So, and what this tells you, and like one of these things is, like in this case, if after like the first part of the game happens, if you have one of each kind of game, either in your shopping cart or in, either in your shopping cart or in your in the trunk of your car, you'd get a bonus of four points at that point. And so here's like three card games, one dice game, three dice games, and one worker placement game, or one meeple game. And you can qualify for more than one, and you can get extra points for either of them. And that's, everybody gets that, not just one person. Uh, you will also, you start off with 300 euros, everybody gets that, and you will also like be able to go ahead and you, you'll shuffle these up, and whoever is lucky enough to get the press pass, that means they get to, they get early in, early entrance into the convention hall, and they'll get to go first. That's kind of like the first player marker. After the first turn, um, who, like, to, to determine the first player, you actually go by uh, whoever has the least number of, uh, of, of games. And by least number of games, I mean the least number um, in their cart, uh, not like in their trunk of their car. It's basically the person who has the least amount of stuff, they're the least encumbered. So uh, this is after, before we take our first turn, what you'll do is you'll end up these decks of these tiles here. That's kind of like the the loading dock uh, of the of the of the the, uh, the shipments of the games that are coming in. And so then you will flip over these. I've already placed them here. And you, you, you put these randomly. And after you turn these over, oh, we're getting lots of blue games. These are the games that are going to be coming out next turn. And you can always kind of tell maybe um, which games are, are going to be, uh, uh, like, maybe pop up because the number of open spaces that are available. Like, there's a lot of orange games. So the fact that we got an orange game down here is actually pretty impressive because there wasn't many in these decks. So you can kind of have a good guess. But that's where these minus one, plus one, and then even plus the sheep go. So you have a situation where uh, like here's uh, pick a polar bear, uh, and then it goes in space B10, and it, you know costs pretty cheap, but it's a dice game, and what that means is that dice games lose one popularity because they're that minus one. Down here, these are the plus ones, so dice games go back up one uh, for for conjurers. They will go up. Strategy games will go up one for Florenza. 
and they will go up another one for uh, CV. And so you have these games that now, if you buy a game with the hourglass symbol on it, the, the strategy game, I guess, or they're, they're worth three base points plus whatever modifiers they might have. Now, also, there are these event tokens, and we'll draw two of these at random, and we place these on this, on Ku here, and on, what game is this? I apologize, I'm going to have to look at it closely here. And, oh, Patch History, <laughs> that the, the game that everybody's been talking about. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to place, what we drew was two, we drew one that uh, it's like, people are talking about it, so it's worth one extra victory point. So we're going to go ahead and put that one on there. And a sold out token. Oh, Patch History is sold out. No way. So what that means with Patch History is if you're going to buy it, you actually then have to use uh, your pre-order spot. Everybody gets one pre-order. So when you go and you buy it, you place the, the, the token, the sold out token on your pre-order. And that means then that you had purchased it prior and you're picking up your copy there. And then, and unfortunately, like, you know, everybody else, you just get to look at the demo copies if you if you don't have a pre-order uh, spot open on your on your player spot. So, but those will go, those tokens will go on those particular spots. And I think this plus one uh, victory point here is for, like, it has goodies, like like a special expansion or something with, with the game that uh, you only could get at Essen. So, and also this is where the sheep go. Now, if these had been two different colors, say like it had been, this yellow one had been up there instead of this blue one, we would take these sheep, and this is just representative of the crowd. It doesn't mean sheep, like the crowds are sheep or anything like that. It's just, they're kind of mucking up the works. And you would have put one there and one there. And now the reason why the crowds are important is because each space to move through when there's a crowd available, it takes two actions instead of just one to get through. But in this case, since we have one blue and they're both blue, the other one is going to go in the concourse here in the middle where everybody can buy their beer, their their, their wieners, and their pretzels. And um, this is a very important space, and I'll explain what that does here in just a little bit. All right, so after all that is done, now people can actually take their turns. And what you will do is you will take your secondary token, your secondary meeple, and you'll place it on your board. And as you take actions, you'll go one action, two action, and so on and so forth. And you take your entire turn and you do what you want. There are two, there are three things you can do in your turn. You can move and you start off in there. And so, and then you just, you decide you go in and you start taking your actions. And you can move diagonally, so you can go, this is the opening, but you can move diagonally to here, and you can move into there and so forth. You, you move around, and it only takes one action to move one space. Now, if you go onto a spot with a game, you can buy the game immediately. You just immediately buy it, you pay the money, and you get a, it doesn't take an action, and then you fill up your, your player board with that particular game. You put it in your backpack or your cart or whatever that you're using to carry your games at Essen. The third action you can do is you can draw two cards out of the wish list part, wish list deck, and then keep one and put the other one at the bottom of the deck. And so, like, you can add cards to your wish list and hopefully maybe get a game that's available and that's sitting out there. So, if you have a situation like we did, we're going to look at we look at our, our stuff, and we got lucky because one of the games that's on our wish list, Archon, is right there it's just sitting there waiting for us to buy it and so we know we're gonna buy that one and so but we are gonna look at the other things that we have it's like well uh, the seven swords out there yeah it is but it's all the way back there can we do you think we can get back there and get it who knows but this is one of those things where you have to work your way back and then work your way back to the uh, back back to your car so you can dump it off and then go back in so on your turn, this is just a sample turn. I'm not going to go through a bunch of turns. What you could do is you could enter the, enter the, the 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 hall, if you will, and you would go like one. That's an action. And so here, I'm just going to put this right here so we can kind of see. Um, so that's our first action, like right there, one. And then we go here, two. And so then we're going to buy that game. And so now we've we've purchased that game, and now it we it's part of our our wish list. We 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 we're guaranteed five bonus points, and so that's that's good. And it costs us forty, but that's okay. We you start with three hundred. I'm not going to exchange it. I got some. Uh, I don't know how the money is going to work in the final game, but this is the paper money that I got with this prototype. Works just fine, but I use poker chips normally when I play. 
Uh, so you pay your money, and then you notice it's got a plus one marker on there, so it's plus one, and if we look down here, hopefully I won't spill this, um, it is a dice game, and so like it's plus one, so it's worth two plus one. So then we take our, we immediately score three victory points, do that, and that would be our, and so we, we, we block up this thing, we've used up one of those spots that we can go to, we've done a second action by moving that spot, it doesn't cost an action to actually, you know, buy it or whatever, and, and add it to our cart. And so now we're going to be trying to work our way back there. But, remember, right now, uh, strategy games are worth quite a bit of money. So Wildcatters is sitting right there. It's also got that nice big plus two on it. So if we can go, we have one, two, three, four, five actions left. So we could go, you know, one, another one, two, two, and we can go there. Now we could have bought this game if we wanted to, and, that, and sometimes it's just it's a good idea too. But I didn't want to buy it and use up a spot uh, in our in our cart. Having enough spaces left in your cart, thereby having actions to do things, is a very important part of the game, and you don't want to load yourself down. So we get on Wildcat, but this one's just too good of a, a, a point total to pass up. So we're going to pay the money. Uh, we're going to pay the forty-five for for Wildcatters. We're going to put it into our cart like so. It's worth plus two, and then strategy games are already worth five, so that is worth uh, three, so it's worth five points. We go up to there. And so we're there, and then we're gonna go one more, and there we go. And now we're on our, our second uh, game that has a uh, on our wish list. Now, if we were here, on our player board, we couldn't buy it, even though it doesn't take an action, because we can't put a game underneath the spot that we bought. But in this case, we can buy it. And so we're going to go ahead and buy this. We're going to pay the 30 euros for it. It's only worth three points because of the fact that it's a dice game worth two plus the one is three, but it is part of our wish list, and we're well on our way to hopefully getting you know to more bonus points than just five on the way back. And so we've, we've satisfied two of the first four that we have. Now, if we had maybe an extra turn or something, maybe we'd move, you can move up here into the Galleria, and that's a way to like, kind of like, it's a quick way to move over into the other location. Uh, but you know, in, in these three spots are what those are used for. But um, in this case, you know, our turn is done. We let somebody else go and they're gonna move in, buy games and what have you. And, and we're, we'll go from there. Now. There's a couple other spots I just want to explain. The beer and schnitzel spot or whatever. If you do move into that spot and you pay, it's, it's optional, you pay the 20 euros. Sure, it's really expensive, but you're buying some beer, you're buying some pretzels, you're buying soda, water, whatever it is that you want to eat or drink. And say this was on that turn, you immediately move yourself back two spots on your action, uh, action uh, total. So it's a way to kind of Technically, like the, thematically, you're resting, you're relaxing, you're taking a load off, and you're revitalizing yourself to head back out, and so you can buy more games. Now, in this case, if we did that, obviously, since there's a sheep there, it it takes extra movement to uh, get through there. But uh, you know, so you probably wouldn't use that spot right now because it, you're you're not really gaining anything. But usually. A sheep won't be in that location, and it's a it's a way to, to to gain back some extra energy, so you can you can continue on, maybe get an extra move out of the turn, maybe an extra game in your cart. So um, eventually, what'll happen is I said you'll 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 have your cart. So after this, maybe you just head back quick and on your next turn. I'm I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit. You'll empty out your 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 truck, or empty out your your backpack into your into into your. Uh, uh, into your trunk of your car, and so we move these up here. We have a dice game, we have one of these, we have two dice games, and so maybe this would be a good time to like actually like consider. It's like well, you know, it's like we got two, we got one of these, so we just need another car game and a uh, and a meeple game before the the end of the middle middle of the game. We've got two dice games, so that's if we can get one more dice game and one one meeple game, that'll be another four victory points. So it's something to look at I need next turn. After the turn is done, like after everybody's gone, and I'm not going to put those out there. Just assume that they've gone. Um, you you put these uh, games out here. So here, this one belongs on B10. We'll find B10 right there. Uh, patch history sold out. Big 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 surprise. Uh, patch history will go there. Coup 
will go on indie boards and cards. The Conjurers, Florenza, E07, and CV on A13. If I can, there we go. And so you place those out after everybody's gone. You Take the next, and you place these randomly. You can place them however you want. You just turn it over. So, like, here's Quantum, uh, Polterfoss, Asgard's Chosen, Aeropostal, Concordia, and Caverna. Oh, that's pretty kind of neat. And so you draw two more of these, and you place these on here. This one is a discount. It's, like, minus uh, 10 euros from the price. So this one actually... Actually, it would be pretty cheap. And Concordia is sold out. You'd need a you need another you need one of those uh, pre-order tokens to be able to get that one. And then here, Meeple Games go down one, so go down like one there. And then you can see Meeple Games go up one for here. Strategy Games go up another one, and Card Games go up one. And you begin the next turn. And you once again you head out, you buy games, come back. When you do come back in here, you and drop off your games, you can then also go to the ATM and get more cash. For every 50 euros you take out, you lose two points, however. So it's one of those things where you have to kind of decide, is it worth it me taking the money out? You know, but you, am I gonna be able to replenish the, those points? But that's how you get more money in the game. You have to go back to your car. And you continue on until you a couple more turns, and then you hit this the AM spot, and then when you get to the AM, you then to you do the bonus points for these three. Once you do the bonus points for those three, you, you get rid of them, and then there's these cards that are for PM. You just take three of these randomly. Let's take those three. And you can see that now the totals are more, obviously, because you've got a lot in your car and probably some in your cart as well. And so, you know, but, and these are worth eight victory points if you can satisfy those at the end of the game. You'd once again go out, these will go up and down and so forth, and you go out again and you buy. And obviously then in this case, the, the sheep will move to there, and the sheep will move to there, and now it takes two movement points to get through there, and that is debilitating if you get, like say, trapped in there, and you gotta like try to work your way out, you know, and, and you're trying to make it to your car. And then eventually, um, you'll get through all of these, and all the, all, the, all the games will get out and everything will be fine. The sheep, then at the end of the game, they just go to the exit because everybody's leaving, so it's tougher to get out to your car. If you are the first person to get out to your car and leave before the end of the game, you get plus four victory points because you're like beating the mad rush out the door. And so you would like just take your little meeple and say, ah, oh, I was the first person out. And so you're like, you're getting out of the parking lot and you're not getting that log jam. Same thing as another person goes, they get two victory points. The last two people, don't get any. If you get trapped uh, in the convention hall and are unable to get out because of the sheep or whatever reason, it isn't that you don't get any victory points. You still get to cash in everything that you did. You um, you, you total up your victory points uh, for uh, all of your games that you did as the game went, and for the money you take out, you, you reduce that. Um, you At the end of the game, you, you see how many extra victory points you get for this, and then finally, uh, you, sh you reveal to everyone um, how many uh, of your wish list you satisfied, and you get the bonus points for that. Uh, whoever has uh, the most victory points obviously is the winner, just like in any any game like this. Um, as a neat uh, bit of... Uh, uh, if you manage to tie somehow, which I haven't done, but you could, theoretically, you could both two people could tie for the same score. Whoever has the least amount of money... <laughs> is the winner uh, because the idea is is that if you're leaving Essen with money um, for shame you should have spent it all on board games so you can play them when you get home but there you go that's how you play Essen the game uh, there's obviously I, I didn't show you every turn there's a lot more to it but the game is a blast um, and like I probably like the most fun part is the idea of going out and like buying games like oh yeah sweet you know I got a copy of Madeira or I got a copy of Concordia or things like that and that's one of those like neat parts of the games that it, I I like the fact that it 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 it's actually like games I know and games I've played and then like that, that like you can picture yourself actually at Essen uh, wandering the halls and, and picking those up but Enough about that. I can explain more about why I dig the game when I show you in the conclusion, uh, and I can do that uh, right now. So, I'm spinning this box, right? And I'm going to ask the question, 
Am I getting dizzy? And I ask you that because on the front of the box you can see there's all these cool people and you can probably recognize some. And there's a really cool dude right there. Anyway, so yeah, so I they 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 actually asked me they they found a picture of me somewhere where I was doing the big two thumbs up like that, and uh, they were they asked me uh, if I didn't mind if I put myself they put me on the the game box, and I said no because that's pretty cool. So uh, thank you uh, uh, to Frederick, the creator of uh, Essen the game, for putting me on the box. And this and all the stuff this box I know is the art's going to change slightly. Maybe they're going to remove me. Maybe I'm not good looking enough to make the final game. But I know like and I mentioned that. In the, in the gameplay, everything I've I've seen the pictures of the the final game board, and one of the things that I I really liked about the game board is that the action track uh, that you, that you have this right here is actually on the board on each side of the board. So for, so for each player, you know, there's like there's a, there's an action track there, and so like you, that's right there and things like that. And so and, and the board itself looks beautiful. And and I'm sure that the the Kickstarter uh, program or whatever will show pictures of that um, as well. Um, I I, I want to say one other thing too, and I was just thinking about this the other day. So so this is um, the games that. Uh, were represented in these tiles or whatever obviously a lot of those games um are releases uh um like fairly recent releases obviously so the, the game actually kind of feels like like it is now i could see and i don't know for sure but i could definitely see uh either um like when the game uh uh when when, when like another version of the game or something comes out i could see them like you know packaging up tiles and like selling them on, on the cheap and so then you could just replace them you know like replace the tiles on the, on the certain spots or maybe even like overlays for the board so like the publishers could actually change and you could do so you could actually say like oh you know it's like this is Essen of 2015 or something, or Essen of 2016, and you could just, then you say, oh, these were the hot games of that year, and that would be kind of cool, actually, I was thinking about that, and I was like, yeah, that would actually be really neat to kind of like, you know, oh, remember when this game came out back three, four years ago, and you could play it, and you could remember it, or whatever, but anyway, I mean, theoretically, like, the game wouldn't change much at all, I mean, obviously, certain, um, certain uh, spots in the board would remain fairly the same, but uh, they would uh, they, they, they would uh, like, you know, uh, thematically fit the year, if you will. But that's just me thinking on the top of my head. But anyway, so I, I referenced a bunch of stuff in the, in the introduction about why I really enjoyed the game. Um, basically, one of the things that I like about games are uh, for a game, for a Euro game, uh, to interest me, it has to give me uh, tough decisions. It has to make me um, pause and wonder, uh, okay, well, is doing A preferable to B or should I do C? You know, and, and trying to, uh, struggling with that internal decision uh, to, to, to try to figure out if that's the, the, the best option for me at that point. And the one that I referenced earlier is a perfect one. You know, do I have time to race out to the car uh, dump off my stuff, collect money, which is in, which is in and of itself a difficult decision as well. How much money do I need at this point? Um, is it worth the amount of points I'm losing to get that money? Can I, you know, the investment basically? It will be worth it for me. And um, you know, so there's there's that was wonderful decisions where you have to make. And like, there's nothing more frustrating for me than when I played this game is like when. You have the wish list for for a game, and like nobody else can is is looking for that game. Only you. You're you're the one that wants it because uh, you know there's there's only one for each one. But somebody will just pick up the game as they're walking by uh, because it's worth a few points to them. And you're like, oh, I needed that game because it would like give me an extra. It would it would catapult me into the next level of of like the wish list bonus points and things like that. And so there's this difficult decision where it's like, do I race forward and try to get that? And, and then what if the crowd shifts and like, and then all of a sudden now I'm kind of just stuck there and I can't get back out to my car. And so that is the part of the game that I really, really enjoy. Now, Add in the fact that, I mean, even though there's, like, lots of ways to get points, this doesn't really feel like a point salad type game. It isn't like it's just everything you do is worth points. Um, add the fact that, like, uh, I like the fact that um, 
the randomness of the tile draw kind of determines which games are worth more money, which one games are worth less. Um, you know, worth more money, worth more points, sorry, not money, worth more points, worth less. Um, you know, and plus, like, just all the other little added little variables, like, you know, the little sold-out tokens and, 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 you know, so you can, like, you know, the pre-order. I mean, everything about this game kind of just functionally fits a board game uh hobbyists mindset you know it's like oh you know it's just the game sold out but luckily i pre-ordered it you know and so i get it and oh and like if i get this game here at essen it's going to have this strain this essen uh expansion that's only going to be available here at this convention and so then it's worth extra points and stuff like that and i love the fact that it kind of embodies that mentality it embodies the the gotta have it gotta have it gotta have it board game feel that the vast majority of us that enjoy designer board games have you know combine that theme combine it with a very solid rule set a very fun rule set i mean i i like the whole process of like figuring out which way i'm moving and which way i'm going to go and, and combine all of that together and plus there's a spot where you can buy beer and pretzels you know that's a, i'm never going to complain about that uh you combine all of that together and it's just it's just a flat out fun game and plus it isn't really a long game either i mean it you know four people game maybe lasts 45 minutes to an hour it's a very quick quickly paced fun game um there there can be a little bit of analysis paralysis going on just because when you're trying to like do your route and figure out which way you have to go to get to the game like if you know that i need one more um, dice game and then combine that with one more meeple game and that'll give me my extra bonus points trying to figure out where you need to go to get that and combine that with the money that you have and that, that can that can bog the game down a little bit but for the most part uh, the game is really straightforward and you, you know it's, if you have any AP prone prone players uh, you shouldn't have too much of a difficulty with it as far as that is concerned so there you go that, that is S in the game um, Go ahead and check out the webpage for the game and check out the Kickstarter page and what have you. You can definitely uh, learn more about it by going that route. If you have any questions about the game and the process and where you play it or anything about it, by all means, you can ask me that. and I'd be happy to answer that to the best of my ability. Um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the designers of the game will be more than happy to pipe in and let you know what they think as well. So, um, as always, I always try to say, will you like this game? Well, I think if you um, like a medium weight euro that, that plays quickly um and if you like pick up and deliver type games and like also like secret agenda games because of the fact that you know you yourself know which games are on your wish list things like that um i think this is a game that you'll you'll really enjoy uh i and i just like i said if you are a board game hobbyist i think you'll enjoy the game a lot just because of the theme and because um for those of us who don't have a chance to get to essen uh at least this way we can kind of slightly live vicariously uh, through a board game and um and uh and, and feel in some way that we are there so there you go uh that was essen the game uh i am under viking this is my gaming dojo thank you very much for once again joining me and watching me do this little thing that i do and until next time this was me telling you to have yourself an awesome day all right bye-bye